Since we first found out about the GBD Duo over a year ago, we have been patiently waiting to get our hands on it to try out. Please note that this is a pre-production model and not the final product. As such, there are some talking points about the design which we will cover in this preview video. Let's first take a look at the dual displays and the configurations you can use. The GBD Duo measures around 11.6 by 8.2 by 0.9 inches when fully closed. It weighs around 2.27 kilos. It is quite heavy, especially compared to say the GBD WinMax 2 model, weighing less than half the weight of this. The Duo folds open to reveal the dual displays. The top and bottom displays can be angled independently to your preference. On the back is a built-in kickstand to provide some support. When fully open to the standard angle, the laptop measures around 13.7 inches in height. The top screen can be folded back onto itself into a presentation mode where there is a screen on both sides. The laptop measures around 8.8 .8 inches in height whilst in this orientation. And last but not least is the tablet mode, which is essentially closing the laptop with the top screen acting as the tablet screen. It is a little thicker than before at around 0.98 inches. You may have noticed that whilst in presentation and tablet modes, the top display is not secured and a bit loose. GBD have confirmed that they will be adding a magnet to the final production model to keep it secure. The displays themselves are AMOLED touchscreens measuring 13.3 inches with a 28080 by 1800 resolution at 60Hz. All the fine details are on the screen. Quality looks great, especially when HDR is switched on. Together they give you an 18 inch display that is perfect for all tasks ranging from productivity, watching media and gaming. Talking about productivity, both displays are compatible with the GBD stylus which has 4096 levels of pressure. I can't draw at all, but the designers will find the dual displays with stylus support very useful. The top display also supports video in via USB-C. You can use devices with USB-C video output such as gaming handhelds, laptops, mini PCs and phones on the top display. The great thing is you can still run Windows on the bottom display and you can also use it whilst the Duo is switched off. Let's now move on to the main part of the laptop. It features a full QWERTY keyboard that is backlit and can be switched on and off independently. The keys are large with a fairly low profile. I wrote this voiceover text for the video and had no issues at all. I'm not a fan of laptop trackpads, but I had no issues with using this one. It is responsive and the left and right mouse clicks feel nice. On the left side we have a 3.5mm audio port, a full size SD card, a USB 4 port and a USB Type-C port. On the right side there are two USB 3.2 Gen 1 ports and the power button with built in fingerprint scanner. The back has a 2.5 gigs Ethernet port, Oculink port for connecting to an eGPU such as the GPD G1 and last but not least a HDMI port for connecting to an external display. You can connect two additional monitors via the USB and HDMI ports to create an awesome quad monitor display setup. Or with the GPD G1, add four additional to bring it up to six displays. The GBD Duo will be available in two CPU configurations. The first is the popular AMD Ryzen 7 8840U, which we have seen in many handheld gaming PCs this year. It's a great CPU, but it is over a year old now. The second model we have here. It is the brand new AMD Ryzen AI9 HX370, with 12 cores and 24 threads running up to 5.1 GHz. It has the new AMD Radeon 890M graphics running up to 2900 MHz. We will be checking out some games later. AI is a big thing in processors now. The HX370 MPU has 50 tops performance, which when combined with the CPU totals 80 tops. More on this in our benchmarks coming up. Depending on the CPU model, there are options for 16, 32 or 64 gigs LP DDR5 RAM running at 7500 mega transfers a second. For storage, there are options for 512 gigs, 1 terabyte or 2 terabytes NVMe SSD. There is a second slot for additional storage, giving you a total of up to 8 terabytes. For communications, there's Wi-Fi 6A, Bluetooth 5.3 and the 2.5 gigabits Ethernet. It runs on our 80 watts hour battery which supports fast charging up to 50% in 29 minutes. 
We ran some battery life tests with the TDP at the default 28 watts, full screen brightness with Cinebench running on a loop. With both displays switched on, we got a max load battery life of 1 hours 45 minutes. And with the top display switched off, we got around 2 hours, so there's around 15 minutes difference. We will cover the idle and average use tests in our final model review. We also conducted some fan noise and temperature tests whilst running the battery life tests. Fan noise was on the whole fairly quiet at around 55 decibels, and on every load it was as high as 60 decibels. Whilst running Cinebench and Forza 5 at the same time, the highest temperature we measured was around 50 degrees C. Again, do keep in mind this is a pre-production device and benchmarks may change by the time the final model is released. All benchmarks are performed at the default 28 watts TDP. We will perform benchmarks at different TDPs once we have the final model. We start the benchmarks with PCMark, which tests the CPU, GPU, RAM and storage. We get an overall score of 7,788, which is around a 10% increase over the GPD WinMax 2 2024 model. Geekbench 6 measures the CPU and GPU performance. We get a massive score of 5,852 and 14,107 on single and multi-core tests. That's a 133 and 24% increase over the previous highest results. Geekbench AI, as the name suggests, tests the AI processing performance. We get fairly similar scores on the single and half position tests, but a large increase on the quantized tests. We will have further test results and comparisons in our full review. Cinebench tests the processor's single and multi-core performance with some rendering tests. We get a reasonable increase on single core performance and a much larger 47% increase on the previous highest score from the Win 4. And on Cinebench 2024, we see a small increase again in single core and a 42% increase on the multi-core scores. For 3D Mark, we are running the Time Spy, Night Trade and Fire Strike benchmarks. We see a good increase in performance compared to the 8840U models, as well as the Intel Ultra 7 on the One X Player X1. Keep in mind that X1 did score well in 3D Mark, but it was a bit lousy for actual gaming performance. We will be making a separate, more in-depth video with gaming performance including the GPD G1 as the Duo as an Oculink port. On Forza Horizon 5 we see a decent increase in frames per second for the Duo. At 720p we see 151 frames per second compared to 135 on the Win 4 2024. And at 1080p we see 118 frames per second compared to 98 again on the Win 4 24. That's an 11 and 20% increase respectively. On Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3, we get scores of 135 and 83 frames per second at 720p and 1080p respectively. That's an increase of 21 and 31% over the Win 4. This game is more GPU dependent, so the 890M is making a difference here. Having spent a few days with the GPD Duo, my initial thoughts are very good. It did take a little getting used to using a vertical dual display orientation, as I have a horizontal triple monitor set up in the office. But it did not take long to get used to it whilst I was setting up, running the benchmarks, playing some games, general usage and writing this review. Apart from the issue with the second display being loose in the presentation and tablet modes, which GPD have said will be fixed in the final model, I could not find any major issues with the design and usability. The performance is great for your day-to-day -day workload. Playing AAA games at great settings and doing all of this with a video for example, playing on the other display. My only kind of negative in my time of using the GPD Duo is the weight. This is a heavy device at 2.2 kilos. I took it home in a carrier bag with the GPD G1 and the carrier bag nearly gave way. Coming back to work after the weekend, I had it in my backpack and whilst it's far easier to carry, it is still over 2 kilos to carry around. Maybe I'm too used to the smaller devices like the WinMax 2 or Pocket 3, but it is something to take note of. In our next video, we will dedicate it to the gaming side of the GBD Duo, as I know that's what everyone is interested in. We will be testing at different TDPs and different resolutions, as well as with and without the GBD G1 via Oculink. If there is anything you would like to see in the video, please let us know in the comments. 
You can learn more about and pre-order the GBD Duo at joyx.co.uk and joyx.net for worldwide shipping. Thanks for watching. If you haven't already, please subscribe to keep this channel growing. We will see you back in our next video.